Fred, it is absolutely unbelievable how much uh, cosmologists, in particular astronomers, have learned in the last couple of decades uh, with what's so-called precision cosmology, with measurements uh, uh, going on. So is it, is it fair to ask, with what we've accomplished remarkably in the last 20 or 30 years, what will we accomplish in the next 20 or 30 years, and particularly from your point of view, because you've studied the ultimate future of the universe. So I want to ask you, in the next 20 or 30 years, what can we learn about the next 20 to 30 trillion years? Well, that's, of course, a big question. <laughs> so let's focus first on what science or astronomy and astrophysics might give us in the next 20 years. Well, I think two of the most important fronts are the expansion of the universe, which is found to be accelerating, and extrasolar planets, so the two different ends of the scales. Mm -hmm. So for the first of them, there are many surveys, um, much work being done to see exactly how the universe is accelerating. And what's at stake is whether the universe has what's called a cosmological constant, or if the energy that's causing the universe to accelerate is constant in time, or whether it varies with time. So, so the, far it's constant. So far it's constant, so far it's consistent with constant. So the key issue and the key answer to your question will be what they find. If it turns out that 20 years from now, the cosmological dark energy, as we call it, is consistent with being constant, then the universe is kind of simple and understood, but it's kind of weird that it has that value. And then the focus will be on understanding why that constant value obtains. But the if, implication of that? The implication of that will be that we need a, an explanation for that one value. But if the universe it, will continue to expand forever and eventually right. burn out and dilute itself. That's correct. So then, given that, the future of the universe is actually um, well determined because each bound structure in the universe today will remain a bound structure, but it will become isolated from every other bound structure. So in about 100 giga years, 100 tr a billion years, give or take, we won't be able to do cosmology anymore. Because you won't be able to see beyond because your local group. Because we won't group be able to see beyond our local group. All the other external galaxies or clusters of galaxies will be redshifted beyond our view. So we can only see what's in our local group. By that time, Andromeda will have collided with the Milky Way, so we'll be just one big sort of... Happy family. One big messy <laughs> galaxy, right? And then the stars will continue to shine because they don't care. They don't care when we collide with Andromeda. And they will continue to shine for tens of trillions of years. Okay. Now, on the other front, in the next 20 years, I suspect, and I hope that we make an enormous amount of progress on extrasolar planets. We've been making so much progress per year for the last 20 years that it's likely to continue. And what we have done over that 20 years is we've really started to um, outline the inventory of planets. We have discovered planets of ever increasing or decreasing mass. We now find planets as small as Earth on a somewhat routine basis. Whereas only two years ago, the first one that was as small as Earth and in the habitable zone was discovered. Mm -hmm. That was Kepler-186f by Elisa Quintana et al. Um, but I suspect that those kinds of discoveries will not only um, continue, but accelerate. So in 20 years from now, we will have this incredible, rich, diverse landscape mm -hmm. of extrasolar planets and um, the solar systems they live in and their dynamical properties. And hopefully, the theory will develop along that, that we can understand their formation properties. And much of the, the uh, analysis we'll be able to do will be because we'll have, the, the, through satellites, the ability to see the atmosphere of some of these as it, as it begins to pass through the, the, uh, the, the host star, the starlight will go through the atmosphere a very, very small amount and we'll get a spectrograph reading of that. Yeah, that's the hope. Yeah. We're right now at the, uh, at the point where we can do the, just what you said for hot Jupiters. These are big Jupiter mass planets near their stars. And as time goes on, we'll be able to do it for smaller planets and planets further away. Mm. Okay. The other thing that's coming is that we get better and better at imaging planets, which just simply means taking a picture of them. So eventually we hope to be able to take pictures of smaller and smaller planets. We've been able to take pictures of some large planets far from their stars. But over the next 20 years, we'll take pictures of smaller planets closer to their stars, hopefully, hopefully edging upon taking pictures of other Earths. All right, let, let, let's switch to what we might discover about the long history of the universe. Uh, uh, it, it is dependent upon the cosmological constant in yes. terms of what, what happens. So 
What kind of data can we get in the next uh, uh, couple of decades uh, or more uh, regarding the cosmological constants? We have these huge surveys of uh, billion galaxies that we'll be getting data on. Will that be able to give us uh, a, a, a handle on uh, how the cosmological constant has uh, either either uh, been constant uh, through hi history so far and therefore likely in the future or maybe changed? Will, will that give it to us? Well, that's the hope. Um, it's the hope to do exactly what you just said. The answer to your question depends on what nature gives us, right? It might say that, the data might say, that the cosmological constant is constant in time. And then what we'll have is that it's constant to within some precision. Right. So we have a parameter that determines the degree to which the cosmological constant is constant. And if that parameter is equal to minus one, yeah in some arcane units, um, the cosmological constant is constant. We now know that it's minus one plus or minus about 0.1. Depend, some yeah, people will quote smaller percent. error bars, yeah. but some would quote a couple percent, but I would say, I'd be I'm cautious and say 10%. But in 20 years time, we will either know that it's minus one plus or minus a much smaller value, or it's bounded away from minus one, which would be a small but interesting time dependence. So, I don't know how far down the error bars will go in 20 years, but they're likely to get to the 1% level. So, so let, let's speculate, uh, because you've, uh, you're one of the experts in the long uh, future of the universe in terms of uh, what, what it will be in 20, 30, 100 trillion years. Uh, and so, articulate your understanding of the far future of the universe today with the different possibilities of the cosmological constant. Well, if the cosmological constant continues to be constant, or even slowly decreasing with time, then the basic future of the universe will remain the same. Each bound structure will become isolated, and each bound structure, will, and by that I mean each cluster of galaxies, and our local group is our local cluster of galaxies, each entity will just evolve itself. And inside those galaxies, the stars will evolve. They'll live for tens of trillions of years. You can continue to make new stars for trillions of years, although by a trillion years, you're making very, very few, mm -hmm. but you make a couple. Um, and then after the universe is older than that, you don't have active stars anymore. And by active it's, stars, I mean... It's, and the radiation <clears throat> is too dilute to re recombine. Well, no, all that matter has been used up. And um, there's still like diffuse gas between galaxies, right. but um, all the dense gas has gathered into stars, and the stars that exist have done their thing and are now white dwarfs. Mm. So instead of having active nuclear burning stars, you have only the remnants from those stars, the white dwarfs, the neutron stars, and brown dwarfs and black holes as well. So the universe looks quite different once, you're, once it's older than tens of trillions of years. And then, and then go, go on, because black holes will evaporate. Uh, yeah, so going forward from there, the degenerate objects can actually collide with each other, which is very rare, but they can hoover up dark matter particles and let them annihilate and mm -hmm. give you energy that way. The dark matter can annihilate and provide energy. And then eventually we think that protons will decay yeah. and provide energy. <clears throat> now at a very, very low level, at a very, very low rate. And that brings us back to the next 20 years. One of the um, things that I would love to see in the next 20 years is an unambiguous detection of proton decay. Oh, I would love to see a, not an upper limit, the upper limit's now 10 to the 33, a little bit longer than that, 10 to the 30 years, or a little bit longer than that. I'd like to see an actual detection of that. And there's hope, and I would love to see that. So that would be a great result for the next um, 20 years.